Good evening and welcome to Charter House Vespers. Tonight we will enjoy a Celtic service of evening prayer. Let us worship together in peace. Beneath the mist of time before the world began, beyond our understanding in the beginning, God. Fathering history, mothering creation, parenting Earth's people from the beginning, God. Expecting the right moment, preparing the right way, revealing the right person for each new beginning, God. We believe in one God, maker and mover of heaven and earth. Let us pray. God of love, giver of life, you know our frailties and failings. Give us your grace to overcome them. Keep us from those things that harm us and guide us in the way of salvation. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The psalm appointed for today is Psalm 25. To you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. O my God, in you I trust. Do not let me put, be put to shame. Do not let my enemies exult over me. Do not let those who wait for you be put to shame. Let them be ashamed who are wantonly treacherous. Make me to know your ways, O Lord. Teach me your paths. Lead me in your truth and teach me. For you are the God of my salvation. For you I wait all day long. Be mindful of your mercy, O Lord, and of your steadfast love, for they have been from of old. Do not remember the sins of my youth or my transgressions. According to your steadfast love, remember me for your goodness sake, O Lord. Good and upright is the Lord. The Lord instructs sinners in the way. The Lord leads the humble in what is right and teaches the humble God's way. Let us pray. Merciful God, you continually show us your ways of forgiveness and steadfast love. Remember not our sins, but recall your compassion to your people. Satisfy the longing of your people and fulfill all our hopes for eternal peace. We pray through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 21st chapter. O oh God, as these words are read, our ears are open. When Jesus entered the temple, the chief priests and the elders of the people came to him as he was teaching and said, by what authority are you doing these things? And who gave you this authority? Jesus said to them, I will also ask you one question. If you tell me the answer, then I will also tell you by what authority I do these things. Did the baptism of John come from heaven or was it of human origin? And they argued with one another. If we say from heaven, he will say to us, why then did you not believe him? But if we say of human origin, we are afraid of the crowd for all regard John as a prophet. So they answered Jesus, we do not know. And he said to them, neither will I tell you by what authority I'm doing these things. What do you think? A man had two sons. He went to the first and said, son, go and work in the vineyard today. He answered, I will not. But later he changed his mind and went. The father went to the second son and said the same and he answered, I go, sir, but he did not go. Which of the two did the will of his father? They said, the first. Jesus said to them, truly, I tell you, the tax collectors and the prostitutes are going into the kingdom of God ahead of you. For John came to you in the way of righteousness and you did not believe him. But the tax collectors and the prostitutes believed him. 
And even after you saw it, you did not change your minds and believe him. Here ends the gospel reading. This gospel is about two sons and their father. You know, in an ideal world, every child gets the attention that they need from the adults who care for them. Fathers and mothers take time with each child, and each one receives the attention they need. But we do not live in an ideal world, do we? Not every child gets a lot of individual attention from their parents. That was certainly true for me as one of four. I rarely experienced individual attention from my parents. They were too busy corralling the four of us, spirited young individuals, and trying to keep us safe. But on one occasion, I remember struggling over a decision that I had to make. I must have been in junior high. I was riding in the car with my mother. Many miles were covering that way, driving from the farm eight miles into town to school. I asked her for help with my decision, and, and she listened. She considered. She regarded me in my need. And then she spoke to me, to me alone. The, the well-known quote of William Shakespeare, to thine own self be true, and it must follow as the night the day. Thou canst not then be false to any man. Our gospel text for today invites us to find our true self before God. In each of the two brothers, we see ourselves in both of them. There's the self with good intentions. I want to forgive, I want to serve, I want to love God, I want to do more for my neighbor. But first, let me take care of my other concerns. And part of us is the son who is, might be initially reluctant, but masters himself and does what God wants him to do. Each of us has a battle within ourselves between the false servant and the true servant, the false daughter and the true daughter. How do we find our true self before God? How do we remove the hypocritical masks that we put on? How do we be sure that we are not accusing others of that which of we ourselves are guilty? This is evening prayer, and so it's a good place to suggest a spiritual practice to do daily. This can be added to your practice that you're doing now, or you can give it a try, something new. One method for being true to God is to begin each morning before God with a prayer, a prayer like this one. O oh Lord, open my lips, and my mouth shall declare thy praise. This has been my practice. It, it might be the effects of this prayer last only for a few minutes for me until my soul and mind and heart are dragged into the minutia of the day, the list of things to do, the plans that have been made. But if we have a spiritual practice, at least we will have begun the day by speaking the truth. The truth upon waking our true self before God that we are in the presence of God. God is with us, and we thank God. This verse has been the morning prayer of Christians for many, many centuries. Psalm 51, 15, O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth shall declare thy praise. And it is so, it has been the morning prayer, because it works. When Jesus speaks to the deaf and dumb man to heal him, Jesus heals him by speaking one word, be opened. In Greek, ephatha, be opened. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth shall declare thy praise. Yes, we must come to our true selves before God. We must recognize both the first son and the second son within us. We must serve God as our true selves. Vespers is evening prayer, and it's important at the close of day to be comforted, to find peace, to find resolution to some of the questions and problems 
of that day, of each day. No matter what kind of day you and I have had, we can end the day in peace. We can do this by following the practice of the last thing at night, simply thinking of 10 things for which we are grateful. The soft touch of my hand on the swaying grasses by the sidewalks outside Charter House. The smile and the hug that I get from my coworker every day. Morning light on the lake. The cry of the killdeer in the night. Conversation and laughter in my office with a resident. First yellow leaves on the ferny branches of the rose. Seeing a resident who came back from her pathway to heaven, back from the gates of death, to be with her family again right now that is happening. I have seen it. Her bright eyes and her glorious smile. It is amazing what the spiritual practice can do to open the door of one's heart to peace. Thanks be to God. Amen. Please join me in the prayers of evening, ending each prayer with, Lord, hear us. These are prayers for the care of creation. Let us pray for God's world, that its beauty may be preserved, its variety retained, its integrity respected. Lord, hear us. That pollution and cruel exploitation might cease so that rivers can clap their hands, waste places burst into flower, valleys laugh and sing, wildlife live in safety, and all as you intended. Lord, hear us. That the children of tomorrow may not need a museum to show them the wonders of nature today. Lord, hear us. That the poorest nations of the world may not harvest their fields only to fill foreign tables. Lord, hear us. That Christ who pointed to the birds, the flowers, the corn, the sunset, might not find their beauty lacking were he to return. Lord, hear us. Hear us, creator of all. Convert the hearts of those who ravage the earth and strengthen the resolve of those who respect it. And since the earth is your gift to us, prevent us from destroying by thoughtlessness that which is not ours to own. Amen. O God of all gods, grant us your light this night, your grace as we sleep, your joy in the morning, and let us be made pure in the well of your health. Lift from us any anguish, take from us empty pride, enlighten our souls with the light of your love. Jesus Christ, Son of Mary, Holy Spirit, light of life, shield and sustain us and all our dear ones this night and every night. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as our Lord Jesus taught us. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Thank you for joining me for Vespers. I invite you now to receive this benediction. Bless to us, O God, the moon that is above us, the earth that is beneath us, the friends who are around us, your image deep within us, the rest which is before us, the blessing of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with you now and always. Amen.